All her life, Elizabeth had been obsessed with astrology. Every decision she made was based on horoscopes, even the birth of her daughter. When she realized that her daughter would be born in the worst astrological year, Elizabeth refused to accept it. Instead, she decided to fake her daughter's birth date. She waited two years to tell anyone about her child and even made fake documents to back it up. Baby Lisa Marie had no idea that she was two years older than she thought, living in her mom's lie. Before I continue, please like and subscribe. I had a very quirky mom. She believed in astrology, kept crystals all around the house, and loved everything supernatural. People thought she was a bit strange, but to me, she was an angel. I adored her, and she was my best friend. I grew up a lot faster than other kids. I was super smart, tall, and very big compared to kids my age, which made people uncomfortable. Why is your baby so big? She looks and acts like a toddler. When I was five, I noticed kids my age were still so small and baby-like. Mommy, why am I so much bigger than the other kids? People think I'm weird. Nothing about you is weird. You're just special. Mom always made me feel loved. Life was perfect with just the two of us. But all that changed right before my sixth birthday. I was fast asleep one night when suddenly I heard something under my bed. Nervously, I peeked over the side and a little boy jumped out and howled like a wolf. I screamed and mom rushed in. When she saw him, she <laughs> laughed. I meant to introduce you two in the morning. This is your cousin Charlie and he's going to be living with us. I'm a werewolf. Ow! Wait, what? Mom explained that he was an orphan and if we didn't take him in, he'd have to go live with strangers. Charlie is a handful, I know, but he's family and... And family comes first. That's my girl. Life turned upside down after that day. Charlie was naughty and wild, but mom never got angry with him. No matter how crazy he acted, she always took his side and asked me to be patient with him too. I tried my best to ignore him for mom's sake, but he didn't make it easy. One evening before dinner, I was studying in my room when I heard loud voices downstairs and rushed to check. Charlie had invited over a dozen neighborhood kids and they were eating all our food. What's going on here? They're my friends and they'll be eating with us. Or I'll throw sand in your food, on the couch, in your bed. You'll find sand everywhere. Why are you so annoying? Why are you such an angel? Just shut up or I'll make my friends kick your butt. Mom had walked in too and she just told me to let him be. I stormed off angrily and he and his gang raided the fridge. I didn't understand why mom put up with him. But he got even worse when mom got a job as a substitute teacher at a fancy private school and enrolled us in the seventh grade. He became friends with a bunch of bullies and would land in detention every week. I had a hard time fitting in too. I was still the biggest kid in my class and everyone stared at me as I towered above them. One day in gym class, we were playing dodgeball when I accidentally hit a girl in the head. She blew up at me. Coach, this giant almost killed me. She shouldn't be allowed to play with us. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. I know, Lisa Marie. Maybe you'll be more comfortable with the ninth grade kids. You'd fit perfectly in there. I was so humiliated. When I told mom, she gave me a big hug and told me the same old stuff, that I was special. Well, I'd rather be normal, but the stars had different plans for you, love. For the first time, I got annoyed at mom. I didn't want to talk about the stars, I wanted to talk about my feelings. I wasn't buying her theories anymore, but I pretended to believe her. In the eighth grade, I decided to own my weirdness and not let it get me down anymore. I began playing sports with the older kids. I made friends and even met the cutest boy there. His name was Alex and I had the biggest crush on him. My life got so much better at school, but at home, Charlie's attitude really changed towards us. I can't believe you're driving us to school in this piece of junk. You never had a problem with my car before. Yeah, that's because I didn't realize how poor we were. It's embarrassing. Hey, you could be a little more grateful. He doesn't mean it, honey. Yeah, I do. I don't like him treating you like this, mom. But mom just asked me to ignore it, as always. Ugh. The next day at school, Alex asked me to join him for lunch and I was over the moon. I didn't even think he knew I existed. We had such a fun time talking, and when I got home, I wrote all about it in my diary. But the very next day, something horrible happened. 
I was playing basketball with Alex and the other kids during recess when suddenly mom barged in, waving my diary in the air. Lisa Marie, you're in love and didn't tell me? Who is this Alex? It says you want to marry him someday. That's not happening, Missy. Not until I find out that your stars are perfectly aligned. Mom, stop! Why? Please don't tell me he's a Scorpio. My face burned as I felt everyone's eyes on me, and I couldn't even look at Alex. I just ran out of the gym and locked myself in the girls' bathroom. How could Mom do this? I'd never felt so angry at her. I skipped the rest of my classes and went home early. But when I entered my bedroom, I saw Mom inside doing some cleansing ritual with my diary in the center. And I just lost it. I picked up the big jar with some weird liquid and smashed it on the ground. Lisa, what have you done? That was important. For what? To become a bigger joke than I already am? What were you thinking, Mom? I'm just trying to protect you. Because some stupid horoscope said so? You're… you're insane! I slammed the door and went out into the backyard for some air. And found Charlie smoking. What do you think you're doing? Whatever I feel like. I heard you shouting at Auntie, and that's a side of you I've never seen. Get lost, Charlie. No, I like it. I think I want to show you something. Curious, I followed Charlie to his room. He dug out a huge bag from under his bed, and I was shocked to see piles of school documents inside. Copies of all the major test answers. I sell them to rich kids and can make a killing. I can hook you up too. Are you crazy? You could get into so much trouble. You have to get rid of them. Why do you always have to be some goody two-shoes? Is it to please your crazy mom? I know she's a lot, but don't talk about her like that. She's been nothing but good to you. She's just an embarrassment. People talk about how nuts she is, and they laugh at us like we're a big joke. I make sure to tell everyone she's not my real mom. You're such a jerk, Charlie. And you're so blind. You don't even know all the crazy things she's done. If you knew, you wouldn't love her so much. What do you mean? But Charlie just grabbed his bag and began to walk away, only to turn around and say, if you tell anyone about this, I'll make sure you regret it. He never came home that night, and mom was so worried. But then we found out he'd gone to live with one of his rich friends from school, and he wasn't coming back. Mom was really sad, and I decided to forgive her. I was completely dreading the next day at school, but when I bumped into Alex at lunch, he was so sweet. I'm sorry your mom did that, but in a way, I'm glad. I found out you like me because I like you too. For the next few months, things were calm. Charlie completely ignored me at school, and I did too. Alex graduated from high school soon, but we started dating, and thankfully, mom didn't bring up his horoscopes again. Soon, it was time for me to send out our college applications, and I was anxiously waiting to hear from my top university where Alex had gone to. But then one day, I got a call that rocked my world. My application was rejected because my birth certificate was fake. Why would mom have a fake birth certificate of mine? I contacted the home affairs office, but they couldn't find my certificate. According to their records, there was no Lisa Marie born in 2006. I was so confused. I begged them to keep looking, and the next day, I got the most shocking email from them. We found another Lisa Marie in your area, but she was born in 2004. I printed out the birth certificate they'd sent me and saw mom's signature on it. What? Furious, I kicked mom's door open and demanded an explanation. Mom, what is this? Did you fake my birth certificate? Mom looked at me and snatched it from my hands. How, how did you get this? So it's true. I was born in 2004 and not 2006. Why would you do this, Mom? I can explain. It's complicated. No, it's not. All I know is that I just lost two years of my life thanks to you. Maybe everyone was always right about you. Since when do you care about what people say about me? And I did what I had to do. You lied to me my whole life. You watched me suffer and get teased every day, and you did nothing. I protected you. It's my job as your mother, and I'm not going to apologize for it. Your original birth date had one of the worst predictions I had ever seen. I had to fake your birth date for a time when they got better. I'm so tired of your frickin' stars and predictions, Mom. It's a bunch of nonsense. And if you truly believe all this, 
You're just as dumb and crazy as Charlie said. I regretted my words instantly, but I was too mad to take them back. I rushed out of the room before I made things worse. I sent my real birth certificate to the university, and they sent me an acceptance letter soon after. And now, I was even more eager to leave. It seemed like mom didn't really understand what she'd done, and I just really needed some space and time away from her. I did miss her though, and we began texting soon after. Although our relationship wasn't the same anymore and we'd grown distant, at least we were talking. I couldn't bring myself to visit her though. Not yet. But I really loved life at university with Alex and made so many friends. I truly felt like I belonged for the first time. Things were good until one day in my third year, I got a call from an unknown number, and I was shocked to hear Charlie's voice. Lisa, your mom is sick. She has been for a while, and I think you need to come home. My heart just dropped. Alex and I drove straight through the night, and when I got home, I rushed to mom's bedside. Oh, mom, why didn't you tell me? You were so mad at me, honey. I didn't think you'd care. Of course I care. I just needed some space to deal with everything. That doesn't mean I stopped loving you. You're here now, and that's all that matters. And Charlie's been taking such good care of me. I always knew he was a good boy. As mom fell asleep, I left her to rest and found Charlie waiting outside. Thank you for being there for my mom, Charlie. It means the world to me. No, don't thank me. I'm just so sorry about how I treated her. I was in a bad place back then, and I made friends with all the wrong people and got into some serious trouble. If auntie hadn't come to my rescue, I'd probably be in jail right now. I owe her everything, and I guess you too. I was really horrible growing up, wasn't I? He looked so sincere, and I lightly punched his arm and then hugged him. The worst! You were so annoying! I spent every day with mom while she recovered, and soon after, she began to look like her old self again. One afternoon, I found her digging in the garage for something. What are you doing, mom? Be careful. I'm looking for your old blankie. Why? She poked me in the belly and laughed. She's going to need it since she'll be born in winter. How did mom know I was pregnant? I'd just found out and I hadn't even told Alex yet. How did you? Mom winked and pointed to the sky. And then we just <laughs> burst out laughing. What were the odds?